TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Oh, what's that behind me, you may ask? Oh, that's the live channel, man. That's where all the shorts and inspirational moments and funny stuff goes on here, man. Even some videos that don't make it that we record on Twitch or Facebook Live, they go here, man. Link's down in the description, by the way, if you if you care. What's this? <laughs> Patreon. Just watched a little movie on there. Sexy Beast is called, I think. Link's down in the description. Uh, all my old videos is on here. If you want to go check them out. But let's get to the main presentation. Can't Pay Will Take It Away, Season 1, Episode 4. It's been like three weeks since we watched it. I didn't even realize it was that long. <laughs> What happens when you get into debt? Pay it back. They're cars. Well, if you don't... Get that off. They'll take it away. Around 3.9 million British families do not have enough savings to cover their rent or mortgage for more than a month. A report by the Centre for Social Justice says thousands of people are caught in the perfect storm of rising living costs, falling wages and expensive credit. Over 200,000 homes. Uh, every Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are enforcement officers based in the... Also known as sheriffs. Cheer. Against you. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Today, the team is heading to Thornton Heath in South London to evict a female tenant who owes over £3,000 in rent. Despite being served notice to leave six months ago, she's refused to go. Paul and Steve have a high court writ that in... Before I say this, pause, man. <laughs> hey, if I was a female, pause once again. I wouldn't be broke. I'm sorry. There's no way. There's too many avenues for y'all to go down. Morally, they might not be right, but I wouldn't be broke for sure. Pause. Instructs them to repossess the property and evict the tenant immediately. They complete up to 400 evictions a year, so there's not much that gets under their skin. But that's about to change. Hello? Oh, it stinks of damp. Hello? Somebody deceased in there? Oh, it stinks. Anybody in? Hello? Ugh. It stinks. <coughs> it's really appalling, this is. It looks super clean, except for the mold. I mean, this is like a danger to health, isn't it? Well, it's like push chairs here, so they've got young kids in here. What sort of people are they? Every cold surface has got condensation on it. My guess is this is a dryer, and it's actually exhausting into the house here. There's damp everywhere. This is really bad because there are young children here. There's baby milk here, toddler milk. Well... This is definitely molded up for sure. Just breathing in mold 24-7 is not the good for your respiratory system. Lord's agent has arrived with a friend. She's been trying to access the property for months. Oh my gosh. It's everywhere. <laughs> Steve's son, Ben, is also part of the enforcement team. You're gonna have to tear the whole house down. This ain't no good no more. You gotta tear these walls down. You gotta make sure the wood is not to uh, say. It's over. It's a I don't know how you can live like this with kids. The thing is, I've written her so much letters saying, please, I wanna get in, sort out the yeah. damp. 
please. I'm so gonna, you've done everything you can yeah, to try and she's her. not letting me. She's not letting me. Now she doesn't answer the phone. She ain't been paying her rent. So what happens now? The property's been repossessed. It's back in our possession. Okay. So we may look to do an agreement with you to let them stay for a few days or no. let them take what they can or you guys let them make arrangements for you for you to let them in to pick up the rest yeah, of their I'll stuff. Yeah, I'll let them in to get the rest of their stuff. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I don't understand why people live like that, but there are more of them out there than you'll ever imagine. Look, bro, I do not care how late I am on rent. If there's, if there's, if I'm still in there and ain't nobody kicked me out, hey, come fix this. I don't care. I ain't going. Not like that. And unfortunately, obviously, we come across them. An hour after they've arrived, the sheriffs have changed the locks and repossessed the house. But there's still no sign of the tenant. Phone's going to voicemail, so we'll send her a text saying, your oh, house has been repossessed, please call me immediately. That's the worst mould condensation I, I, I have ever seen. Yeah. Just glad that I've got the property back now, so... Yeah, we're not going to let her go back in. Yeah, please the, the, don't. No, we won't. It's now repossessed. The locks have changed. You need to pay us for changing the locks. OK, no problem. Um, procedure is that she'll come back, we'll allow her to take her personal belongings, yep. and then she needs to make an arrangement with you to actually <coughs> go back to get her stuff out. OK. Almost two hours later, there's still no reply from the tenant. We've done all we can do. We've sent her a text message. She's not responding to the text message. She's not picking up the phone. Well, I mean, there's nothing we can do, so... I'm so, doing anything I can at this point. And there it is. She, when we come back, as we will, inevitably, um, she'll just be allowed to get her personal possessions and away she goes. All the sheriffs can do now is wait. It's early evening. Paul has been called away on another case. Steve is on his own. That's He's the, calling the tenant every half hour. That's the first time they're on their own. But there's still no reply. He's getting worried. I do feel sorry for people who are losing their homes. Some people lose their homes through no fault of their own. Um, some people just work the system. I'm sorry, they do. Finally, at almost seven o'clock, he gets through. OK, the situation is the house has now been repossessed. Okay. You, I have the keys. I am at the property now. I did not receive any notice. I did not receive anything from them. We, we, ha we, have, been, we, we have been trying to contact you all day long on the, on the numbers that we've been able to find out for you. We tried. They've been going to voicemail. They've been going dead. If I had received a text or a call, I would definitely have called back. OK. The situation is, unfortunately, the house now has been taken away from you. There is nothing we can do about that. I am at work at the moment, and I've got okay. two toddlers, a little boy of one year old, and a little girl of two years. Yeah, it's time to call and get emergency housing for the night. I'm talking about um, having two children out in the night tonight with nothing at all. I, I am an adult and if it means sleeping on the street for me, that is okay. My little boy is just one year old. The little girl is two years. What can be done now to have access to that house? Nothing. The problem you have yes. is you need to get some stuff out of the house tonight so you can survive for a few days somewhere else until you can make an arrangement to come back and clear the rest. Um, is it possible for you to stay back in London tonight? And who's going to pay my hotel bill? Okay, but um, is, it, uh, is it possible um, to stay over with us this night? For me to stay? No, not at all. I can't do that at all, I'm sorry. I'm begging you to give me from now till Saturday. I, I don't... There's nowhere for us to sleep. What you must understand. But you must understand, I don't have the authority to do that. Oh, Listen, I'm going to call you back in a short while. 
Honestly, bro, that's one thing. I'm telling y'all, I do not play with that, man. I do not play with the housing situation. Like, even if I'm running late on rent like a month or two, if they hitting me up, I'm going to reply. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, like, I ain't going for that. That's too deep. South London. Earlier today, Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner began a difficult eviction in Thornton Heath. Hello? The tenant owes over £3,000. She's ignored requests to leave, despite being served notice six months ago. They discovered a house covered in damp. This is really bad because there are young children here. There's baby milk here. And a tenant in a desperate situation. I'm begging you, forgive me from now till Saturday. I, I don't... There's nowhere for us to sleep. There is nothing we can do about that. If it means sleeping on the street, for me, that is OK. My little boy is just one year old. She they made a valid point, though. She was like, I'm an adult. If it means me sleeping on the street, yes, you are an adult. You knew this was coming. You can't, you can't be oblivious to it and play, turn a blind eye to stuff like this. Because you're an adult and you have two, two little responsibilities running around. Little girl is two years. What can be done now to have access to that house? Nothing. Now confronted by the possibility of putting a mother and two toddlers out onto the street late at night, Steve is making a mercy call to the landlord's agent. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Steve. Uh, yeah. Whew. I've just been on the phone to her. And um, she tells me that she's got two children under the age of two years old. She doesn't finish work till 11 o'clock and she's in Richmond somewhere. OK. What do we do then? You know, I can't, I can't put her back in the property for one night. I can't do it. If, if she finishes, if it was that important, she would ask to, get, to come off work. Wouldn't you come off work? Well, I would, yes. You say you don't want to let her in for one night. No, if she's then tomorrow, she ain't going to come out. She will if I come over. I mean, it's just, I'm doing this for me. That's true. That's true. Once he get there, like, it don't matter. You got to get out. But it is like 11 p.m. at night. There's nowhere to go. OK. If you say that she can stay there for one night, I will see that she goes in the morning, takes her kids off somewhere, and that's and then she comes back at, in a few days and clears the rest of her stuff. 100%. 100%. 100%. Physically. If there's a problem, I will deal with it. Are you OK with that? If I take that responsibility for you? Yeah, you take that responsibility and give me a call tomorrow. OK. I mean, what's hitting me is the two kids. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I appreciate that. Because I feel bad that she's got two kids as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the only bit. If the kids wasn't there, I wouldn't be even having this conversation. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, All right then. Thank you for that. Take care. Right, bye. 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 I mean, that's cool. I guess understanding. There's two tiny kids. You can't expect... Well, maybe you can. Maybe it's, I'm in the wrong job. <laughs> I can't put two kids out on the street 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. I can't do it. So the responsibility is on me. My boss may kick my behind for it tomorrow. I can't do it. You know, not everybody's artless. That's the thing. And at the end of the day, we all have problems from time to time. So, you know, if you can help someone out, why not? True. Steve's decision. That's why I actually like Steve and his partner, man. They actually have hearts. Like, doing this job and have, being heartless, I don't know, you gotta be a different breed. ...is unprecedented. Although sheriffs can use their discretion, this is the first time he's ever decided to let a tenant back in after they've been evicted. He restores the original locks so that the mum and her children can get in. And he will return tomorrow. I'm interested to see how this goes the next day. Because normally, man, you get some certain people an inch, they take a mile, like, man, I'm back in, I ain't going nowhere, no matter what. We'll see. It's 10 a.m. 
and Steve is on his way back to the property. Today's the day she has to leave. He with her two little ones. I don't, I don't know the full reasons behind it all. All I just know is that she's, the house has been repossessed and that's all there is to it. She did send me a text last night thanking me to let her, letting her stay. I mean, 10 a.m. though, now you got plenty of time. One more night, one more day wouldn't affect the agent, the landlord, or anybody. The only person it would have affected was the lady in the house. Good morning. How are you? Did I speak to you? Were you? Are I'm you? Steve. I am. Thank you so much for yesterday. Because I gave you the guarantee yep. that I, I don't want. You, I you don't want to go to back you. on your word. Yeah. I understand so I that. I spoke to you reasonably yesterday and you were more than reasonable with me. What you need to take now is the stuff that you're going to need till you can get back. Um, 10 minutes uh -huh. or even a quick shower. But despite drafting in a friend to help her pack, she's still not ready. I take, no, si I take six minutes because from waking up to get out the door. Oh, I don't know how much time you've got. I haven't got much more. I did say to you tw two hours. <laughs> Steve changes the locks again. It's the third and final time. They're just getting their last few few bags together. No lights on upstairs, I think. It's taken over 24 hours, but the tenant finally leaves the property. This is a reasonable transaction between both parties, man. I salute it. <laughs> this eviction is over. Well, that's that now done. A little bit longer than I anticipated, but, you know, such is life. The most surprising thing about the job sometimes is you've done a repossession and asked somebody to leave their home, and then they say thank you. I don't understand that, but we're always grateful, and it does happen. The total amount of unpaid rent in England and Wales is over 200 million pounds. Households sank further into debt this year for the first time since the onset of the financial crisis. A new report says that non-mortgage related debt grew 4% in the past 12 months. Another day. There are more High Court writs to chase. While house repossessions make up a large portion of Paul and Steve's work, there's another part of the job that's taking up more and more of their time. We will seize the vehicle until somebody comes forward with the relative paperwork to say that it isn't actually yours. Known as seize and sells, the sheriff's aim is to recover debts owed to their clients. We're a high court enforcement agency, and there is a debt outstanding. And I don't know if they got this in America, but this is- Is that her car? I don't know. This portion of the Are show Are you in a be, position to settle the debt? This portion of the show be wild. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna pull up whatever you got that can pay this debt, I'm gonna take. Period. <laughs> for your, your mum. Let's say it's in the region of nearly five grand. Every time a payment is made, Paul and Steve get a percentage. The only thing that's gonna stop us taking the car today is if you make a substantial payment. I mean, you know, can I pay a grand or something and do something the next week? Happy days. We'll take a thousand pound off him on his credit card and we'll go forward. But if the debtor can't or won't pay, they have the authority to remove possessions to cover what's owed. Today, they're en route to a season sell job in Surbiton on the outskirts of London. The debt is an eye-watering £25,000. It's, oh yeah, it's over with. They don't got that. <laughs> owed to a firm of solicitors know. who were- I don't know who it is, but they don't got it. Employed to fight a court case, but who haven't been paid. If Paul and Steve can get the debtor to pay up, they'll get a percentage. If not, they'll have to remove his possessions and sell them to earn any commission. Hello. Excuse me, I'm looking for these people here. Mr. Jerusalem, here. We're from the High Court. It's to do with legal costs. The, the, we, ha we have a warrant here for £25,000 worth of legal costs. Can we come in and talk about it so we can get on the telephone to them? 
All right. Mr. Cho, the man they're after, is at work. Mr. Cho is my husband. He's in office now. All right. Is that is that quite close? Is the office quite close? Could could you ring? Could we? You know, we need to resolve this today, if that's possible, please. Come sir. Oh, okay. Hello. Yes, my name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. We have a warrant here for £25,300. Are you aware of it? If I can explain, this is quite serious though, is that the writ here authorises me to take payment of this money, 25000 or to take away the contents of your house. I mean, is there any possibility that you can pay? Can I make it really clear that this warrant authorises me to take the contents of your house away if I need to? And if we wait here, I'm quite happy to do that, but there is a cost to that. For every hour that I'm here, it will cost you £218. Whenever we're doing a job, it's about getting paid, because I'm about why is that? I get paid if we get a result. We don't get paid if we don't. Yeah, but you're missing the point here. I'm staying here in the house until you ring me back. They're not grasping the enormity of the problem. The critical thing that I didn't notice earlier is the actual judgment in the first place is for less than £9,000. Yeah, I saw that. They appealed the decision and lost the appeal. So we're now looking at three times the figure. Wow. This is how debt runs out of control, isn't it? Really? It's yeah. a classic example. Yeah. Mr Cho has been made legally responsible for the debt of £25,000 owed to the solicitors. It's a lot of money, and they've no idea if he can pay up. While they wait for his... 27 bands, 25 bands. It was originally nine, you appealed it, and lost to a firm of lawyers, which sounds about right. Like, what are you appealing? Like, they got all the legal jargon. Like, you're going to lose that unless you... Unless you got, you know what I'm saying, the coldest lawyer in, in the UK. His return... Steve begins an inventory to see if there's anything of significant value they can seize. Dresser. Gun jesset. Outside, Paul is weighing up the options. We've done a land registry search, so we're ahead of the game. The land, the, the property doesn't belong to them. We've also established that the person who is actually here um, the guy whose name is on the warrant is a chartered surveyor <laughs> and that the firm he works for are estate agents and surveyors. So in other words, they're people with the ability to pay, in other words. As they can't take the house, it looks like the only way Mr Cho can pay off his debt will be through his earnings, especially as Steve's inventory isn't coming up with much. He got money, he just choosing not to pay. Nothing so far amounts to the fact that we're looking for £25,000. <coughs> With all due respect to the people in here, none of this will, re will even scratch the surface. Let's say £100, be brave and say £100 microwave. By the time you take it out, who wants to buy a second-hand microwave? They're not going to pay £100. Yeah, definitely not when you can go to Asda and get one for £30. As does your Walmart, right? Three hours after the sheriff's arrival, Mr. Cho turns up. It's the first opportunity to discuss his debt face to face. We've taken an inventory of the items in the ground floor here. Mm. I understand that upstairs he's rented out to other people. Uh, all of these are not ours. Okay. I'm not the owner. I had to sell this house. All right. Today, I was in the city of London. My wife called me urgently. Somebody visited to collect money, whatever. Uh, so I rushed to come here uh, by train and bus. I was shocked. As the sheriffs check Mr. Cho's expenditure, it becomes clear he's already paying out more money than he's getting in. 
Is that your current debt? And every month I should pay monthly. Can you imagine? So many items to pay, monthly pay. I had to because I'm com This is your go you have to pay these? Yeah. Okay. So that's why you may uh, list these yeah. phones or whatever. Yeah. Nothing yeah. for yes. us. No, no, we know. The chance of recovering the debt is disappearing. I'm not in the business. Yeah, it's getting hopeful. It's getting slim. It's not even up to me to ask her how many, how do these people get in this kind of debt? But like, he seemed like he in a crazy. I'm talking fifty bands. Of just going through the motions, but I do debt. need to establish that this house doesn't belong to you, which we've done by checking the land registry. You haven't swung into the drive in a brand new Mercedes car, which we would have taken. No, <laughs> so that's okay. No, so that's okay. <laughs> For example, you mean. For example, yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um, so we will go away empty-handed, but happy that we've done our job. Now, there is only one weakness to this. If we go away, we report that there is nothing to seize. They could immediately, if they wish, issue bankruptcy proceedings against you. Voluntary bankruptcy. You're going to do that, are Yeah, you? myself. Oh, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, so, oh, but don't, sorry. don't worry. It's not fine, but ah, it's, it's, okay. that's all right. Being in debt used to be a shameful thing. Going bankrupt used to have one hell of a stigma attached to it. But that only now applies to people over 50. People over 50 will be ashamed to be in debt and they would not want to go bankrupt. Younger people effectively don't care anymore. Yeah, now they don't. <laughs> I was just about to say, I got like four friends that they filed for bankruptcy. They don't care. It's not a problem to them. With an impending bankruptcy, Mr. Cho is in no position to pay up. Paul and Steve leave empty-handed. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Chow looked very comfortable. But I don't have it. There's no panic in my heart. Fine, sir. I don't Thank got you. it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> The guy's going to file his bankruptcy. I don't doubt that. He's told us a story which is sad in its own way. And the thing has just spiralled out of control. It's very uh, shameful for me, personally, because uh, uh, I should... Uh, I, I have worked quite a long time. I should have saved money and to pay back, pay the debt. But I couldn't pay because uh, my uh, personal economic difficulties. That, that's why I feel somewhat shameful, you know. He did look like he was about to cry, though. The homeless charity shelter says that one in 11 people fear they will not be able to afford to keep a roof over their heads. It found that millions across the country will be starting this year anxious about whether they will be able to pay rent or their mortgage. Today, the enforcement team is on their way to an unusual house repossession in Croydon, South London. We're looking for... 79, 79. 79. <clears throat> There's one landlord and one property, but two sets of tenants are being evicted. The landlord served notice on them three months ago. He wants to renovate the property, but they've not budged. Number 79, next to the white door. So was the original lease was up and then he served the notice because they stayed or something? Always, man, that'd be bogus to me, man. Or was they living month to month and he was like, no, I can't, here's the... The arrival of the sheriffs, armed with a high court writ of possession, will soon bring both tenancies to an end. Good morning. We're High Court Enforcement Officers. We come to repossess the property today. So... Dang. Is there somebody else here as well? Yeah, yes, upstairs. OK. The downstairs room is home to a young family with a small child. They have no rent arrears. In a room upstairs is a tenant who has two children. She owes almost £8,000 and has not paid rent for 24 months. Two years? I call enforcement officers. Wow. And we've come to repossess the property today. Okay, yeah. 
With the landlord keen to begin renovations, there's an urgency to get this job wrapped up. This has been changed to the High Court. There's no eviction letters. Why do I understand? No, but you, you had two months' notice of no, the... No, I've not noticed at all. No, no. 8,000 divided by 24 months is $333.33 per month. I ain't gonna hold you. That's not bad. That is... I have get no notice, no eviction, no bills. I have get nothing at all. When we arrive on their door, we explain why we're there, and the first thing they say to us is they, well, I don't know nothing about this. We don't know what you're talking about. And then we say to them, well, you must have had a letter from this. We've never had any letters from anybody telling us anything about this. And then you gradually talk to them and then realise, oh, yeah, we did have a letter saying that once. And, but they still try and deny that it's their problem. The writ instructs the sheriffs to evict both sets of tenants, but there's a problem. It's the council. Have you spoken to the council about being rehoused? Yeah, I've been there. And yeah. what was their answer? Wait till the bailiffs yeah, come. Yeah, I went there twice. The tenants have got standard delaying tactics, which are inevitably uh, supported by the social housing people. So the councils, in other words. So the minute the landlord wants his property back, the, the councils go into mode, stop the, the housing benefit and immediately start to obstruct so the entire system clogs up. Paul and Steve... That's messed up. That's messed up. ...are encountering more tenants who are refusing to move because they believe the council won't give them somewhere else to live. The landlord yeah. has chosen yeah. to go to the High Court to get this eviction notice okay. because we're quicker okay. than the yeah. county court is. Are you from the... We're from the High Court, no. We're from oh, the High Court okay. in London. Okay. Right. And they use us because we're fast. Okay. And that is that the court was, the paperwork was signed off in the High Court yesterday. Yeah. And we're actually here today. Yeah. Right. But if you've been to the court, mm. sorry, if you've been to the council, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. I can give you a copy mm -hmm. of this High Court order. Yeah, okay. But the long and the short of it is this. Yeah. You've got two hours to get your stuff packed and move out. Is it? Yeah. Two hours. If I two can't hours. go two hours, what's going to happen? We'll I've just throw it all out. Upstairs. We'll just throw it all out into the street. No, no, right that's now. OK, but it still needs to be done. It's a tough stance, but Paul's motivation is that he wants the council to take action so the tenants aren't left homeless. Yeah, I guess. Everybody's playing a game of cat and mouse and let's corner each other into... into Let's corner each other until there's no more corners left in the room and see who has the last move. That's, that's, that's too much. <laughs> we are here to evict you today. Yeah. Right? We might appear to be nice, mm. but you will be evicted today. Right. Okay. We'll try and help out however we can in the meantime. We're caught in the same trap that we were always caught in here. The count been to the council as recent as yesterday, and he's already been on the case and they're saying it's okay they can't evict you without notice wrong this is a high court order completely different to the county court the bailiffs might give them a month or two months but that's why the landlords actually called us in once evicted the tenant should be entitled to emergency accommodation as they both have children but there's not always enough places to go round it's up to the council to decide who gets help and who doesn't paul is doing all he can can you tell them it's important, time is ticking yeah. away. When you go in there, yeah. say that, you know, yeah. let's, give a, let's put a deadline on it for yeah. their purposes. At one o'clock, we're going to throw everything out. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Just to impress the urgency. Right. Okay. Excuse me, I'm not going to get my stuff then. Go and see the council first. Me, and we're going yeah? to do nothing till you come back from the council. OK, make sure. So you make sure the council understand the pressure. You don't got my stuff in there? No, no, just okay. make sure that the council understand. Outside, the landlord has arrived. How are we doing? You it's are? Nice, it's nice to see you again. So how are we doing? Who's going to the council? He went yesterday mm. and he's... The... I feel like I've just seen him in episode one. How many properties he own? The usual old trot out, got to wait till the bailiff comes. Mm. They've both got a copy of the writ mm. to take to the council. Mm. What we're trying to do is, but if they get to the council and they get a positive response, we can plan from that. Oh, we'll get oh. it rolling. So your man's going to change the locks. There's yeah. the keys. 
we've had to go through the protocol to get the eviction order or the cost the cost involved it's cost us almost three four grand to get this whole amount sorted out now it's going to cost us thousands to put this property straight but it's one of those things what we have to do part and parcel of our job so you know we're just glad that we've got the possession today So all of this can come out, all of this floor, all of this Man, they started working immediately. Carpet, <laughs> then come down to the shed. 15 minutes after the tenants leave to go to the council offices, the renovations begin. The landlord's happy. He's got control of the place. He's got all the keys. Locks have changed. No waste of time. <clears throat> He's just ready. ready. At the end of the day, no matter what, when they come back, they got to leave. We just, here's the paperwork for the council so they can get y'all some emergency counseling. No matter what, when you re when you come back, ain't no more nights. <laughs> it's a roll. He's ripping the floors up as we speak. Go on, mate. Hey. Dang, you taking their furniture? Early evening. The tenant's personal possessions are being collected. After many hours of negotiations, they've both been given emergency accommodation. If you look at the routine of a repossession, after we've overcome the first hit and we've repossessed them... This is a change in the episode. Everything is going real smooth lately on this episode. ...property. We change from... Like, the... Everybody's getting their emergency council... I mean, their emergency housing. Uh, landlords are being reasonable. You know what I'm saying? Only Mr. Ch even Mr. Chow was kind of nice, you know. Couldn't get his stuff. Oh well. Enforcement off. Bankruptcy. Okay, whatever. Officers into caring individuals, and we will then go to tremendous lengths to make sure that people are dealt with sympathetically. Paul's uncompromising approach left the council with little option. Yeah, because it's not like. At this point, the council is telling y'all one thing, but we're here to debunk that, what they're telling you. So let's work together so y'all can head to the council and be like, no, it's now or never. <laughs> Put that pressure on them. I get it. Teamwork. Somewhat. One in five families in England now rent from a private landlord. The latest census figures from the Office of National Statistics also show that the proportion of families that own their own home has dropped by 13% over the last decade, as more people are priced out of property ownership. It's two weeks before Christmas in central London. Enforcement officers Paul and Steve are travelling to one of the capital's most expensive areas, right in the heart of the city. We're in the congestion car, did not Yeah. We've been in it all day. Parking. Yeah. Parking was a tenant. Yeah. Congestion was a tenant. Yeah. You know. It's a place where evictions might seem unlikely, but you'd be mistaken. He'll come back and say, expensive that is. Oh, he what's, might. What's, what's up with all the trash on the floor? Looking real New York y right now. What the hell is that? Why is my. Oh. Camera's a little crooked, okay. Choose more flowery words. They're chasing a debt of around £4,000, made up of rent arrears and sheriff's fees. The High Court writ has instructed them to both repossess the property and seize possessions. The locksmith has already arrived, but before they meet the tenants, they have to get in. Hi, sorry to trouble you. We're enforcement officers and we need to get into one of the flats up top. I wonder if you could let us in. Thank you very much. <laughs> they must not like them up there. They was, hell yeah, come on in. Get them up out of here. Tough. Once inside, it's an uphill struggle, even before the job has begun. Wow. I need oxygen. It didn't seem like it was that many floors. 97? Yeah. No wonder I was out of breath. You're out of breath. I should well. think so. I'm getting up too old for this look. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one out of breath. Good morning. 
Forster We're High Court enforcement officers. And there is a debt outstanding of £4,000. And we've come to repossess the property today. Give me one second. Sure. No, no. Four thousand dollars seems like the lower end of today's episode. <laughs> the man who owes the money is not at home, but his partner is in. The rent has not been paid for three months. There is a debt outstanding of four thousand pounds. So it's been to court. Yes. And you're, you, you know, you you lost in court, and now we come to evict you. Yeah, we will be able to pay half of that. Well, what? Because we are waiting for the money. Okay. The offer to pay is unusual, but it's too little too late. The situation is that I need to secure the debt on money, on equipment, property here. While the locks are changed, Steve chats to the debtor on the phone. The rent hasn't been paid for some time. The landlord has gone to court and it's now been transferred up to the High Court, and we're High Court enforcement officers. Uh, we've come to evict you today. The situation will be is that we will seize everything in the flat until this money's paid. Please don't take this the wrong way. If you pay the money today, you still have to leave. There's not nothing bad. I can do about that. So please accept my apologies for that, but there is nothing I can do. Let me just pass you back. At that point, it's, it's time to start thinking critically. Even if I pay this money, which I have half of, I get, still got to go. So at this point, I'm, I'm, me personally, if I was in this situation, I'm just going to keep my little money. I'm going to keep my money, try to go get a new place with the money, and then figure this out later. Because you can't take all my money and I'm homeless still at the end of the day. Like, nah. Thank you. The tenant claims the money will be paid today, but nothing can stop the eviction. It's quite reasonable. He says it's his fault. What happens if he could pay the money today? He's expecting some money today. So I just explained to him that, you know, he can pay the money today, but there is nothing I can do about them staying in the flat. He's on his way, so he'll be with us in a short while. They have a seven-year-old daughter as well. While they wait for the tenant to come back, Paul decides to intervene. He has a plan to soften the blow. He calls the landlord's agent. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. You are? Um, we have repossessed the flat. OK. There's just a couple of questions, if I may. Go for it. Is they, they say they are able to pay this rent arrears. Yeah. Is it was just a question as to whether the landlord might review the situation in view of the fact that they're going to pay up to date. Quite frankly, we stay Yes, um, I, I don't mean stay today because we've now repossessed it. So yeah, I mean, I'm moving forward effectively. I don't know. As a as me putting myself in a landlord's shoes, what can guarantee me that this is not going to happen again, and I won't have to go through this whole process again and spend my own money again to do this? Like, nothing can guarantee me that, so I don't know. We could, we could give them a holiday let for a week or a fortnight. So the question is purely, would the landlord look favourably if they pay that, the repossession costs and the locksmith's costs? Mm -hmm. uh, you might go forward with it. Fine. Let me ask him. He's based in the States, so I won't be able to get an answer for a good couple of hours. All right. Thanks ever so much. Bye -bye. Take care. I was in America. A holiday let would allow the tenants to move back in after a few days. I'm telling you, man, if I can get enough money, one day I'm going to come out there and I'm going to buy something. I'm going to buy something. It's going to be called lit housing. <laughs> the lit housing. What the hell? Giving them time to sort out the debt with the landlord. The incentive on this is if the landlord does agree to that, he's going to get his rent paid up to date. Otherwise, what we've got in the flat isn't going to pay £4,000. So the landlord has a choice. Bird in the hand, isn't it? London. Just two weeks before Christmas. Paul and Steve are carrying out an eviction in one of the capital's most expensive suburbs. They're chasing a High Court writ for just over £4,000 
based on rent arrears plus costs. When they arrived, Morning. only the debtor's partner was at home. We're High Court Enforcement Officers. What's the problem? There is a debt outstanding. I wonder if she even knew. Of £4,000. But now the man they've been waiting for is back. Chris from Poland recently moved here with his family to start a new job as an area sales manager. Yeah. My name is Paul, this is Steve. Oh, it looks like it's not going too well. Hi there, Chris. We have a, oh. we have a warrant here. Yeah. Now, can I just say something before we go? Is there a possibility you can pay the rent? Yes. OK. It doesn't affect the fact that we've now repossessed the property, but I've, the landlord lives in the States. I've already just phoned the agent and asked if there's a possibility, if you pay the rent tomorrow, for example, mm -hmm. would he still let you stay here, if that's OK with you? But you still have to leave today. Yeah, I understand And that. then, but, but what I'm trying to say is we're quite happy to try and change things to make it go forward. I came to London in February 2013, and um, we came with the vision of me having a full-time job, but at that time, the job did not happen, and um, we ran into the problems. <laughs> if you can get your stuff together, and then I'll get in touch with you if the landlord comes up trumps and, and agrees that you can stay here. Yeah, um, yeah. See? And now, like, after hearing that, there's... You go, you're coming into some money today, cool. But with the news that you just told me right there, like, you, this is going to be a continuing problem until you figure out a new job or a full-time situation. Thank you. Rents are quite high. Well, unless you don't pay them, then they don't cost much. <laughs> but then you get thrown out of the house. Something you cannot live in London without money. And we're not the kind of people that will go on benefit or, or child benefit or whatever. She <laughs> This was not... Hey, man, listen. You overshot your dream by a little, by a little bit. It's okay to need help. Uh, as long market. as you're helping yourself, though. So us trying to avoid an escape and not ever, ever pay that, it was just a matter that a um, few months, it was late, and that was the problem. Because of the work, because of the job, because of, of the situation. Chris and his partner leave the property with just a few personal possessions. They still have no idea if the landlord will accept the sheriff's plan for their return. Can I, can I lock it down? Um, yeah. Oh, thanks, sir. Okay. We'll come down and speak with you. All right. There are absolutely genuine people who don't want to be in debt and they can't avoid the consequences of, of what's happening around them. So, Yeah, see, this episode was chill. Everybody was cool. In other words, they're not driving the situation. It's a few days later, and Paul and Steve are returning to central London. Chris has paid up. The sheriff's plan has worked. Oh, OK. OK, this is a holiday letting agreement, um, which will give you 14 days to stay here to sort out everything else that you need to do, and then we will go on from there. Essentially what's happened, you've paid the rent up to date now, so there's no debt, and the landlord is in agreement that you continue, so he obviously accepts that you're a good tenant, yeah. apart from this hiccup over the rent. But all that happens, because it takes time for that other agreement to start, we do this short term. You could just sign the bit where the tenant is. That's there. Hey, this is a W episode. Everybody was solid, good on their words, good people. I'll contact the agents tomorrow, sort that's out the details, and I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's all we want. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. We're so done. We'll leave you now. Thank you. And we'll. Good luck, Chris. We'll see you soon. Have a nice Christmas. Good Christmas. Yeah. Yeah.
You too. Have a good Christmas. Yeah, thank you. It's that I'm going to lose my home. I really need to do something because, you know, he is a genuine person, you know, um, and everything he said he would do, he did. He did. So he stood on that word. That's a, you know, as a man, things happen. As long as you got a plan and you stand on your word, because as a man, your word is really all you got. And once you go back on your word and once it's not solid, people really start to look at you differently. That's really when it happened. So, it's a solid dude, man. You have to give credit to him. Yeah, for so, sure. So, that little sharp jab to begin with focused him, and he's now back at home, happy, ready for Christmas. The landlord's got his rent arrears, which if we'd thrown him out and left him out... Would... Wouldn't have got it. <laughs> no cap. ...not have occurred. So it's a, this is an occasion when it's a win-win situation. I'm pleased with the result. They're nice people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK. Happy days. Onward and onwards. Oh, onward and upwards. Onward, driver. Just put the pedal... Like, y'all doing a lot. <laughs> yes, sir. You're talking about onward and upward, onward and forward. Just, hey, drive off. OK. Chris and his family are living happily in the... Okay. Cool. Is this so? Okay, finish renting faith in private. New tenants, yeah, of course. 6000 dollars to repair. Work continues. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I am gone.